We are day one here in Las Vegas, Nevada for Identiverse 2024. Just off the plane, we're about to go get registered, get the passes, go walk around, see what's going on. So uh, let's get to it. Come on, y'all. All right, it is now time for my favorite part of Identiverse. We're gonna go down to the Expo floor, and we're gonna go see all the new innovative companies that's going on in Identity, because it has been crazy the last couple of years. Of course, we put together the Identity Top 50 list, so let's go down, talk to some people, and see what updates we need to make to the list. You guys ready? So here with Delonte Wellington with Strata.io. So tell the people, what, what, is, what does Strata do? What is identity orchestration? You know, I really appreciate you asking that question, David, because ultimately we do need to clear the air around orchestration. There's a lot of vendors that talk about, you know, let's call it, you know, managing the identity through the course of their monolithic platform. And right. That's not what we're doing here. Um, our organization created identity orchestration about okay. four years ago. Okay. So the category being created by us means that we get to define what it looks like, yeah. what it smells like, what it tastes like. And in our world, it's the idea of decoupling that underlying application, whatever that application is expecting, from the actual identity sources or uh, the identity stores or systems that live in the environment. So when you think about you know the traditional way of modernizing apps today, it would be to have to manually maybe repurpose that app to speak yeah. OIDC or SAML. But imagine if a world you could just wave a magic wand and you didn't have to. That that translator that sits in your environment understands everything that is supposed to be expected from those underlying ap applications and identity stores, but modernizes it pretty quickly and, and over time, you know, gives you the ability to dictate how identity looks in your environment. That's what we do. We created that. So again. As you guys are out here on the floor listening to a lot of people talking about yeah. identity orchestration, recognize that there's a, there are a lot of different approaches, but you know, Strata is what we would call the purest identity gotcha. orchestration to play on, on the floor. So you guys are the magic wand. That's, that's what I'm we're, thinking. We're not only the magic wand. If you've ever seen uh, American Gangster, we're, we're Blue Magic. Okay. And everyone else is either uh, Pepsi or Mr. Pib. So there you go. You heard it here first, folks. You heard it here first, folks. Strata, Blue Magic. Originators, Wave magic, that wand. magic wand. <laughs> All right, Delonte, I appreciate it, man. Thank you, brother. Thanks, bro. All right, so here with David Broussard of Axiomatics, and we're going to have a conversation of why authorization should be a standalone platform. Because I don't believe it should be. You don't believe that authorization should be? A, I don't think it should be a standalone platform. Oh, well, it's not all standalone. It connects to your identity products. It connects to your governance products. It's a piece of the equation, right? It should right. be standalone. I agree. Great. I agree. But, okay, so your you guys- did not expect that, did you? I did not expect <laughs> that. You threw me for a loop. You threw me for a loop. But, okay, so if somebody makes the argument like, okay, well, this should just be something my IDP does. Right? Yeah. It should be like features included in my IDP. Agree or disagree? Partly agree, partly disagree. <laughs> okay, okay. So the whole thing with authorization is it's not a one-sided equation, right? Right. Um, IDP tends to be one-sided. It's all about identity. It's not about other stuff, right? With authorization, you need to start looking at your resource data. You need to look at contextual data, things that you do not have in your IDP. So you got to reach out to somewhere else. Also, IDP, it biases you towards the authentication dance or the login dance yep. where authorization is needed for sure, but it's not enough. You might want to do authorization in your API layer or in your application layer or even in your data layer. Right. Having authorization as part of the IDP, it's a good first step. It's not enough. So doing authorization through OAuth as well, if we're going to talk standards, yeah. it's a good, great first step. It is not enough. Gotcha. All right, so talk to me a little bit about Axiomatics and where they are today. Because I've known Axiomatics for like, a long, long, yeah. long, long time, yeah. right? So where are you guys today? Like, where do you guys fit into like the architecture now? 
Yeah, I don't. So we've been around since 2006, as you know. I yeah. joined in 2010, so it's, it's been a little while. Yeah. Right? Got a few gray hair. Um, a little bit. But just a little bit, right? Um, still can't grow a beard, though. I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying. But um, our, our place in the whole ecosystem hasn't really changed that much. I think we, we still play really well with the IDPs of this world, with the API gateways of this world. So we don't get a lot of API gateway representation at this conference, but if you went to other more developer or API-centric conferences, you would. Our place hasn't changed. The architecture has a little bit. Okay. If you go back to 2010, we, we would say, oh, you have one central logical PDP that sits in, in the enterprise. Now, thanks to the advent of um, the open policy agent, and microservices and micro gateways, it's more like, oh, you can centralize whatever it is you want to centralize, and then you can have any number of PDPs, so you can decentralize the decision making. That doesn't really matter so much. Right. So there has been that shift in architecture, and that's actually a really cool thing, because you can be closer to what it is you want to protect, so it's going to be, make it more efficient, more performant, if you will. All right. So I think that's, um, that's where we sit, um, in a nutshell. Okay. And apart from that, um, you know, I think from a use case perspective, it's still very much application, you know, data compliance driven use cases. It could be things like fire on the healthcare side or open banking on the, on the finance side. But yeah, those use cases haven't changed all that much. Okay, awesome. Well, maybe you changed my mind. Maybe. Ooh, I like bit. that. All right, man. David, cool. appreciate the time, man. Yeah, good to see you. Thanks. Azure Security, um, probably one of my favorite newer companies because of what they're covering, non-human identity, which is you know, the thing that we've swept under the rug for like <laughs> the last five, 10 years that yeah. nobody wants to look at. Too long. Yeah, so tell us a little about Asterix and like your guys' approach and why you think non-human identity is so important and kind of like booming right now. Yeah, yeah, so what's really helping us at Asterix is what we're focusing on is the, the landscape of everything that a human's not involved in, right? So it could be webhooks, API keys, service accounts, OAuth apps, right? We've created this a giant landscape of a X multiplier of your human users. So right. you know, there's always reports out there, 10X, 20X, 40X, right? It's becoming a large landscape that's allowing for programmatic, consistent access to data processes inside of your tool set. So what we're doing from our landscape is we're checking out the entire landscape, understanding where they live, who they belong to, and also, what are they doing, right? It's also good to know, you know, what's the permissions, what they have access to, but right. what also are they doing? Are they utilizing that entire scope? Are, you know, who do they belong to? So we don't have to play the screen test game anymore, <laughs> right? Of, hey, let's remove the service account. And it's to see who screams, right? <laughs> Dave DB's test, and we realize it takes down production, right? Uh, so we can show usage, we can show behavior, uh, and we also throw out, show risk analysis, right? Understanding the likelihood that something may be breached, something is, Who's on the other end of that mm. non-human connection? Yeah, nice, nice. So, as as you've kind of watched this market kind of grow, right? Because yeah. it kind of, I dare say, kind of like exploded, right? Over like the last few years, right? Yes. What are you like when you guys are engaging with customers and either going to POCs or you're getting no sales? Like, what's the biggest value they're getting? That they're just like that wow moment from them to you guys, and you just was like makes you guys smile. And you're like, yeah. yeah. The the so there's a couple stages to it, right? The initial value is we're finding items they never knew existed. They thought were deleted five years ago. Uh, they're remnants of you know people who used to work for the company don't work for the company anymore, <laughs> right? Uh, but there's still items that are out there, right? Uh, that's the initial to get an actual understanding of what the attack surface looks like, right? You know, you know, call it the wildfire approach, the you know the realization, you know, whatever it may be. Uh, secondary part is well, what do we do with this information? You know, how do we operationalize this? How do we make it part of our security structure without trying to hire 20 more bodies to do this? Yeah. Uh, what process do we put in place? What, um, you know, what actions do we take? What tools do we have to integrate with, right? Can we you know, feed this into our SIM, feed this into our SOAR, uh, make this product work for us uh, and get more mature with it and get more comfortable with opening up this new attack surface to more and more. Let the business run as fast as the business wants to run, but not compromise yourself doing right. it. Awesome. Well, cool, man. Hey. Yeah. Thanks for the time. Definitely. Talk soon. Yep. All right, and that is a wrap for Identiverse 2024. We saw some great technologies out on the floor. There was some great sessions. It's always a good time in Vegas. So there's nothing else to say. Let's go party. Let's go have fun. We'll see you guys next year.